Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Kevin. Please start this video off by clicking the thumbs up button and make sure y'all share this video on Facebook and Twitter. Um, two days ago, I made a video with Mikel saying that if you wanted to be a part of this special video, please contact me on YouTube. I got over 60 responses on YouTube, but I am not able to reply to everybody because YouTube has a limit on how many people I can reply to in a day or in a time frame. So please, if you still want to be a part of it, I need the video by Friday afternoon. That means you must have a webcam or a cell phone because I need you to email me the video. If you want to know what it's about and you follow me on Twitter, please DM me me or write me on Facebook and I will write you the details but again I'm gonna need that video by Friday afternoon let's say Friday at 12 p.m. if you really want to be a part of the video because I know a lot of the people that I replied to I only got two videos back so that means a lot of people just trying to be newsy and you know I'm trying to be for real so if you want to be a part of it please hurry up and write me on Twitter DM me or write me on Facebook so anyway, I'm making this video, you know, um, I heard two mixtapes today, and you know, I wanted to talk to y'all. First, I want to talk to y'all about Jermaine Jones being kicked off American Idol. Now, first of all, I want to say, I have no problem with American Idol kicking him off the show. He was a criminal, and he had a past, and he had warrants out for his arrest, so I do believe in that regard he should have been eliminated, eliminated from the show. What I don't agree with is that they had the cameras there and it was like they put him on the spot. He probably didn't know why the cameras were there talking to him, to the producers of American Idol. And for them to have him sit there and go through that and interrogate him on live TV, not live TV, but it was going to be shown on TV to do that in front of the cameras, I think that was just messed up. And that was very, very humiliating. Now, some people saying, oh, well, he humiliated himself because he lied on the show. But never in the history of me watching American Idol have I seen anybody eliminated in that way. Normally what they would do is say that the contestant was eliminated from the show because of, you know, a criminal past or blah, 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 blah. Whatever they got to say to explain why the contestant was eliminated. And I think that's what they should have went with and not eliminate this boy on TV. And because of that, I'm not watching American Idol for the rest of this season. Like... I really feel that was a tacky way to do that, and that was not professional to eliminate him and, no, to humiliate him on live TV. That's not cool at all. All they had to do was just say, you know, like I said, and then replace him with the contestant that was eliminated last week. I think that would have been the right thing to do. By Jermaine, bring back the boy that got eliminated last week. I can't remember... But he, I think he was a Hispanic boy. I can't remember his name. Anyway, they should have brought him back. So what do y'all think about that? Do y'all think American Idol was wrong? Do y'all think American Idol had the right to do that because he lied to them? Or, you know, just let me know. Because it's kind of like some people agree with me and some people don't agree with me. Somebody trying to go back and forth with me on Facebook. I don't want to go back and forth. It's just... I just had my opinion. I just think that that was tacky. Okay, y'all got rid of Frenchie because of what? Um... Because her thing, they didn't put her on camera, of course. Um, I know, like, some of them was on drugs. Like, it was, it's been a lot. I can't remember everybody from American Idol. But, yeah, it's been a lot going on. Some of, one of them, one of, not one of them was a great singer. He was a male singer. I can't remember his name. And I think he had a twin. And they had, um, they was twins and they had a drug history. And I don't remember them. Not drug. I don't want to say drugs. A police, I don't remember what, what the hell it was. It's just so long ago, but it's just that I don't remember them ever being, you know, interrogated on camera and humiliated like that. That was just not right. American Idol, you're wrong. Let me know how y'all feel about that. I'll be replying to your comments on that. Um, today, I listened to two mixtapes. I listened to Wiz Khalifa's Taylor Alderdice. And let me tell you something. I'm not a big fan of Mel hip-hop artists, and I think y'all know that because we barely talk about them on the Scorpion show, but I decided that I was going to try to be a little bit different by, you know, talking about it, you know, just seeing what I can, you know, how I felt about listening to it. Now, I will say, if I was a person that got high all the time, notice I say all the time, <laughs> if I was a person that gets high all the time, I would listen to this type of music because this is the type of music that I would relax to and get high to because it's so relaxing. Kind of reminds me of Drake's albums, like they're very relaxing, 
they're calm, they're not hype, they're not gang, it's not gangster gangster or whatever. So I, I, I could listen to something like that. But my problem with Wiz Khalifa's uh, mixtape, or maybe that's how all his music is, is that he talks about three things over and over and over, and that shit's get boring. Haters, being new money, and smoking weed. You know, that's the only thing that he talked about through this whole album. Haters this, haters that. You don't know the real people that you with. It's people that are jealous of your success. And I got money this and I got money that. And I'm going here. I'm going to this place and I'm going to that place. And then um, I want to smoke weed. All I want is marry this and marry that. And uh, smoke, smoke weed. I'm driving with my top down. I'm so high. Like that shit gets boring over and over. Only somebody that can listen to that is somebody who gets high all the time and don't care. Because it, it's all repetitive music. It's just a different beat. I needed something else. But my favorite song of that whole thing was the song with Amber Rose and uh, Rick Ross. I can't remember the name of the song. But I like that song. That was my favorite one. So, you know, I try to be a little different for y'all. Um, and I listened to Tiana Taylor's mixtape. The misunderstanding of Tiana Teller. I guess that's an ode to Lauren Hill's The Miseducation of Lauren Hill. And I must say, that girl is good at her music. She can rap, and she damn sure can sing, and she made some great songs. And I really, really enjoyed it. I could tell that she's a Lauren Hill fan, and I could tell that she's a Mary J. Blige fan because I heard their lyrics and the lyrics of her song. And she's also a Janet Jackson fan because she sang parts of the Project Principle on DUI. Um, I can't. I think it features Young Jeezy on that song. But it is so good, y'all. I think that y'all should download this mixtape and get it. Like I didn't like. Excuse me. Can't believe I just swallowed that. Like that. I should have spit it out. Anyway. Oh my God. Don't be mad at me. So anyway, y'all, uh, I was listening to it while I was like on Twitter or whatever, so I didn't write down all the songs that I liked, but it was only two songs I didn't like. I didn't like the first song, and I didn't like the second to last song. Everything else on that album is great. I didn't write, again, I didn't write down no names. I was just really trying to vibe with the album, and it's really, really good. Again, don't let this mixtape pass you by. I love free music. I love free music, and y'all should too. So make sure y'all download that mixtape. Go to datpiff.com, download that. Make sure y'all download Wiz Khalifa's too. I mean, especially if you're a weed head and you like that kind of music, download it. Uh, it it's free. It's all free. So go over there, download mixtapes. Um, what else I had to tell y'all? I'm trying to get into some new people. So if y'all know some new people, let me know so I can talk about them. You know, I'll talk about them on my solo videos. I'm not going to sit there and do that when I do that my stuff with Mikel. So I'm going to do those on my solo videos. So let me know who y'all want me to talk about. And something else I want to talk about is Ashanti's new music video for The Woman You Love. I guess this shit's supposed to take place in, what, 3055? She didn't look... She didn't look too futuristic to me. Anybody could walk around with a braid in front of their fucking head... And different color lipstick and, you know, different color shoes. It wasn't that futuristic to me. Everybody might call it futuristic. The the graphics were futuristic, but Ashanti's look was not futuristic to me. I've seen Avatar, and that's futuristic. You want to talk about futuristic. Anyway, I'm not going to re-go in. But anyway, y'all know I love this song. I, I love the song. I put the song on iTunes and everything. I think the video is three months late. Um, I didn't like the concept of the video, but I understood the video, you know, to go on with the future. You have to accept the past or whatever. So I guess he did her wrong all that time, and she like, fuck it. I'm taking you back, or, you know, I forgive you, and we can go on. That's what I got from the video. The video was not that spectacular to me, no. I think she could have came up with a better storyline, and Ashanti is so good at having videos with great storylines, but this one... I was not feeling I was not feeling it at all. But I do love the song. And I'm finally glad she did put a video out. But I do think it's three months too late. And the Shanti album comes out next month. Are you guys interested in the Shanti's album at all? Or are some of y'all like, why the fuck are you even talking about the Shanti? 
I want to see her win. I mean, she came out 10 years ago with her debut album. So, like, 500,000 copies. And she had song at the hit, at the hit, at the hit, at the hit. And then she hit rock bottom. I don't know what the fuck she hit, but she hit something. And that shit hit her hard. And she trying to make a comeback. Brandy trying to make a comeback. Monica not really trying to make a comeback because she made a comeback two, three years ago. So, she's all right. But... They are all these nineties girls coming back. Tony's coming back. She's trying to make her come back. It's getting crazy out here, y'all. It's getting crazy. Um, but y'all, I don't know. Like Ashanti girl, mm, I don't know if the independent route is really for her. I think she could really benefit from a label that really believes in her and her having her little sub label under a major label. That's what I think should happen. I don't. I don't like Ashanti going the um, independent route, but. More power to her. Um, so, yeah, please, um, that, that's the end of this video. I recorded this on um, YouTube, so I hope everything looks right from the YouTube website. Um, but thank you guys for watching. Y'all have a great night because it's actually almost 1030. So, y'all have a good night or day. If you're watching in the daytime, you have a good day. Enjoy your day. And Mikel and I will be back with a new video on Friday. So please make sure if you want to be a part of that special video, I'm going to need you, please be serious about this. If you contact me, I'm going to need you to be serious about it. So don't waste my time if you're not serious. Write me on Twitter, I'll DM you the details, or write me on Facebook and I'll write you the details. I'll talk to you all later. Peace.